brothers and sisters of the binary universe. What's up? So I found something pretty cool today. Uh, it fits in with this channel pretty well because uh, some of my most popular videos on this channel are my fourth videos, the like fourth, the programming language. And then I also do, um, you know, like <clears throat> iOS videos. And uh, this one combines both of those because there is a fourth interpreter uh, app for iOS that's in the App Store. Uh, it's called RetroForth. And RetroForth is actually an implementation of the fourth programming language. If you know Forth at all, you know that there's like thousands of implementations. It's, it's a language that's designed to be designed, basically. It's, it's, it's meant to be implemented uh, by, the, by the developer. Like it's, it's, a, it's a language that the developer just makes their self in a lot of cases. Now, RetroForth is really, uh, it's kind of the most modern and widely used version of Forth. Not the most widely used version, but the most modern widely used version. Uh, it's got like um, WebGL capabilities. So that's, that's something about it that's uh, pretty cool. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this app. It's it's pretty fun. So uh, right here, the first tab. So you get the app. It's retro fourth. Um, it's like the little seahorse icon. Um, so there's different tabs. There's files, editor, output, split, docs, words, and then there's um, just some settings. You can do like a dark or a light theme and then choose your icon. <clears throat> it's very simple, basic app right now. I hope the developer keeps working on it because it's, it's a real, it's just awesome having fourth on an iPad. And it's, fourth is a pretty useless language, unless you're doing like really low level stuff. Like it's it's useful in, if you're gonna use it to replace like assembly language, because it's it's a little bit higher level than assembly language. It makes things a lot easier. If, you're, if you have to code assembly language, you can write your own fourth interpreter and just make your life a lot easier. Uh, but if, if you could use like Rust or um, Java or C or C++ or Swift or whatever, um, then uh, Forth is pretty useless for you. So um, that said, it's very low level and you know, I'm sure there's some uses for it out there. And it's honestly, my uses for it is just that it, I think it's so cool. It's so simple and just, it's a fun language. So anyway, uh, I have this one file here that I made adding uh, and when, so whenever you do a new file, you get, uh, you get to name it. So I'll just say, um, bit surfer. Okay. And then it, it comes with this. It gives you like this kind of metadata at the top. And then anything that you put in the squiggly lines there, uh, that's what, that's what the compiler is gonna, or the interpreter is gonna see. So, um, now RetroForth does things a little bit differently than if you watched my course, uh, my fourth course, which used G fourth retro fourth for numbers. You actually have to kind of declare that it's a number. Uh, same with like floating point, I think is like F or no, oh no, it's dot. So like dot eight would be a floating point, um, or dot one dot eight would be that, that means 1.8 is the floating point. So, um, you're kind of indicating what the type it is. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's the same. So we're giving it a, a seven integer and a number two integer and a uh, the plus word, which adds the top two values on the stack. So I guess I should go through this. So we're putting a seven on the stack, then we're putting a two on the stack. And then, the, so those are the two top values on the stack and then we're adding them together. And then uh, from there, um, we're gonna get the output, which uh, should be nine, right? So if we go to the output tab, there it is, nine. And now you can go to the split tab and you can actually um, see it side by side, which is way better. I don't, really, the whole thing should just be split in my opinion, but it, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Um, and then, uh, so this, another cool thing about this, uh, this RetroForth app is that it comes with docs. So you can learn all about RetroForth right here, which is really cool. Um, and then it has words um, and it's just a, basically a dictionary of, you know, all the different words available. And there are tons of them already built in. Um, so anyway, let's go back to this files tab. And I want to show you some examples. So there's a 99 bottles of beer example. And if we split and we run that, 
You can see it prints, you know, all the way down to no bottles of beer on the wall. And so that's the fourth program. It's actually a pretty simple program uh, because Retro Fourth has some nice functions built in, basically, that, that help to do that. Um, oh, and then another cool one is this Palindrome one. Um, so you can see I edit, I, well, you can't see, but I edited this file. You can kind of tell because I added some additions uh, in there, but... Um, and I put, I changed this word right here. I can't remember what the rate, what the word was before, but basically let's do this side by side again. So it's going to check. Oh, so right now it's going to check to see if palindrome is a, or if radar is a palindrome, meaning it's the same value spelled backwards or forwards. And it gives a negative one. If it is, if we make it not a palindrome, it's going to give us a zero. So pretty cool, just, you know, simple stuff, but there's a lot of example programs here that you can go through and, and just learn a lot about fourth, which is, which is fun. Learn a lot how, about how computers work in general, really. So I already mentioned that uh, retro fourth does have, I read this somewhere and I, it's probably on their website and I didn't verify this, so I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that they have WebGL functions built in. So you can, you know, if you want to do like web graphics, like web browser graphics, you can actually do that with with retro fourth a lot a lot easier than you could with uh, just some other fourth implementation like G fourth or something. Uh, if we go to the words, there's some cool ones here. Um, let me see what the one built in one I wanted to show you was. There's like I don't know if you saw it as I went by that super fast, but there's clock functions. Um, all these Fs are floating point functions. That's what that means. Uh, uh, oh, there's file functions. So you can actually, you know, write to a file, redo a file, append to a file, uh, close a file, open a file. So, you know, uh, regular fourth, that would be a little more difficult to do. But with retro fourth, they have some nice built-in functions for that. That's pretty, really cool. It makes this a language that really could be used for stuff like that you might use uh, C for, you know, so lower level stuff, but not like, not like assembly language level, like an up, you know, a level above that, like C. This is a cool one, Gopher get. So I think this is a, this is a, you could make your own Gopher client, right? And run it right on iOS. I think that would be a really fun project. Um, takes an address, a server, a port, and a selector. Fetch the resource and store it at address. I, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you give it the gopher information and it fetches it and it, uh, you know, it puts it on the stack or stores it in some memory address for you where you can go and, and view it later. And you can see interface iOS. So it's real, it's meant to work on iOS. So yeah, here's an example. Uh, let's see if we can get this example to work. I'm curious. Or maybe the example, maybe there's already an example here. I don't see one. Let's try it. Where'd you go? There it is. I don't know, we'll see. Fourthworks.com uh, port 70 is even a thing, I guess. And then S put, I hope that puts it in the output. I'm not sure. Oh, what did I just do? The output. Yeah, the app's a little bit glitchy still. Oh yeah, there it is. So yeah, we got a, we pulled the Gopher space for Fourthworks. Super cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just I don't know why that's that's so cool to me that you can just make your own Gopher client really easily right in your right on iOS. Just just super fun to mess around with. You know, like programming has just gotten so much, especially on a hobbyist level. It's gotten so much better on iOS in the past, like, year or two. Uh, yeah, so it's just somebody's <laughs> somebody's fourth gopher site. And you could, you could, you know, put in some code in there where you pull out some of these eyes and make things look a little nicer, clean it up. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's Retro Fourth. Wanted to show you guys that and hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. Peace out.